Now hold him down. I want to sit on his face. If that lone line from Kevin Kelly doesn't prove to you that wrestling is the one and true sport of kings, then I don't know what will. I'm John Rankin with my review, New Japan Pro Wrestling Sakura Genesis 2023 event. My fucking goodness, New Japan Pro Wrestling is roaring back. Ryo Goku was roaring loud. And man, once this event got going, holy goddamn shit. Really good, really good, really, really good shit. Even the worst match on the card didn't last all that long and had a really cool finish. When New Japan Pro Wrestling does shit right, they really can do it better than just about anybody else. And this event was a big goddamn deal. You had a women's three-way. You had a tag team title match. You had Hiromu Takahashi against Robbie Eagles. And Ken Sonata finish his story, unlike another guy, about a week ago. One quick thing. I apologize for this review being delayed. Unfortunately, I'm not able to really watch New Japan live anymore because I, I got to work, guys. I got to sleep. And unfortunately, when a lot of their big events are scheduled... I work during the weekend and during the early part of the week, and I, the paycheck's more important, and I do need sleep. I am only one person. But I am certainly glad that I was able to get home after working nine goddamn hours and doing an hour's worth of errands to watch what was a pretty damn good event. So, um, the we get a, you know, a video package of Sakura Genesis Memories and the rundown of the big matches for tonight's event, and... I don't know who the hell the uh, guest ring announcer was. I don't know. Apparently, she won some kind of contest. She was all bubbly and happy and everything, being all adorable, dee -dee 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 -dee, being all happy. And she got to make a random six-person tag, a random six-man tag where, <clears throat> well, it, it is basically it could be friends and foes alike on teams, and can they coexist? There was one funny line uh, as the car, as you know, these people were being decided because. It was just totally random. They would show up, and then they would realize, no, I don't want to team with this person, or oh, I want to team with this person, and they're on the opposite side. No! Kevin Kelly did say, don't let TV people book the card. That's how you get Jim Hurd. <laughs> big pop there. Big pop for that. Actually, big pop. Even bigger pop. Thanks, by the way, Jen, for sending me this. Who the fuck was it? Like five years ago that you sent this? Five, <clears throat> four, five years ago? Really do appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. But yes, uh, Minoru Suzuki, Great Okan, All Hail, and Toru Yano against Tanahashi, Despi, and Yo. Friends and foes alike basically just, th this was a mess. It was meant to just be entertaining, and that's what it was. I, I think it went a little bit, I mean, it, I guess I didn't go that long. This is a different way of starting, I'll say that much. But can they coexist? And then, you know, Great Okan doing the spot in the corner where he sits, um, you know, on a guy's head and presses his face into the turnbuckle. Because comedy. Because seeing on one's face is funny. And also something people pay good money for. In back alleys in Seattle. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> but we get a low blow on Tanahashi and then a roll up. One, two, three. Toru Yano gets a victory. Yano, at this point, really should just be getting victories in matches like this. I don't think he should be in the G1. I'm going to kind of cringe if he's in the G1. More on that later. But we get to Jeff Cobb, Akira, not the anime, but Francisco Akira, one half of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, and Aaron Hanare. I do want to say I did see what Shingo and Aaron Hanare did. I believe it was on April 2nd. I think it was April 2nd. It was one of those two events. It was... Uh, broadcast in New Japan World. Great stuff. Hard-hitting. Proof that Aaron Hanari has put in the work. Come roaring back from that torn Achilles tendon and through the pandemic and through all the isolation. All that has continued to improve him and Shingo. Delivering a hard-hitting match. Really good stuff. So, Evil, Show and Yujiro were their opponents here. Yeah, I'm done with the House of Torture shit. I'm done with it. But we did get a cool tour of the islands double where Dick got pounded and Show got pinned. That was pretty cool. And apparently, Kevin Knight and Kushida have recently challenged Akira and TJP. Yes, unfortunately, TJP is still employed by New Japan. And it will be a Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match <coughs> at some point. I don't know when. Duntaku, maybe? Duntaku is in, what, a month? Less than a month? Is Duntaku actually still happening this year? Genuine question. I know Capital Collision is happening a week from tonight as of my recording of this, by the way, just in case you happen to be watching this, I'm recording this late Saturday night. 
I don't know if I'm going to watch Capital Collision. A, depends on if I want to spend the money. B, it depends on the card. The card's kind of looking, eh, eh. We'll see. If you don't see a review, then I didn't review it. That's usually how these things work. So, we get Naito, Shingo, and Bushi against Taichi, Kanemaru, and Doki Wataka. So, just four of five guys. The crowd loved Naito until he started spitting on Doki. Still pandemic going on. Maybe don't do that, Naito. But whatever, Naito is being the ungovernable one, as he's known to be. So we just essentially get, you know, just a bunch of random spots happening as you get in an LIJ multi-man match, but it's fun, and they really are trying to actually make just five guys seem like a big force. <laughs> Especially by the end of the night. But triple submission spot, and Kanemaru makes Bushi tap out to the bigger four. Okay, and that factors into the post-match of the main event. So then we get Tamatonga, Hikaleo, and Master Wato, who, way to the Grand Master, can he find a way to a decent gimmick? He can work, but he's bland. He's really, really bland. They took on Finley. Speaking of bland, I don't think this David Finley-led Bullet Club is working. Now, I was all for giving him a chance to be <clears throat> a vicious heel, but Bullet Club has not really been good for a number of years. And now there's splinter groups all over. We have like Jay White and Juice Robinson and hell, I'm sure there will be a couple other members over there in AEW. There's <clears throat> Chris Bay and Ace Austin and Impact. Maybe a couple other people. <clears throat> Not totally goddamn sure. And I'm sure, and there's Balor and <clears throat> Balor there in, <laughs> there in WWE. And AJ Styles, AJ Styles doesn't come back from that broken ankle yet. So anyway, uh, Kenta and ELP team up with Finley. This is all about ELP basically having it, or having had it with Finley. <clears throat> and we get a exchange between Watto and ELP that looks like, oh my god, suddenly ELP is going to get pinned. But no, hits the R2, 1, 2, 3. Finley decks Tama with the Never Openweight Championship. Kenta uses a strong Openweight Championship to deck Hikaleo after they chop his knee out. And then ELP's like, what the hell are we doing? ELP, ELP, ELP chance. And then Finley uh, punches him, and then Kenta ends up hitting ELP with the GTS. Oh, no. And then Ishimori shows up. He was a tag team partner of ELP's. Emphasis on was, because he hits him. Oh, no, he hits him with a low blow. ELP's out of Bullet Club. You know what? Good. Give ELP a deep run in the G1. Put him in the field of, I assume, 20, you cowards. I mean, honestly, this was long. I wasn't sure if they were going to do it here or they were going to extend it all the way to Dominion, but then I think about how they're doing the tours, how they've done the story. <laughs> and they probably wouldn't have a story arc. We're going into G1. Finley and ELP are either going to collide in the G1 or they're going to collide at Dominion and ELP can maybe get some revenge. Who, who knows? Finley... Being the top heel of a husk of a goddamn group, though, I don't know how well that's going to work. <clears throat> that being said, good for what it is. As far as ELP, hopefully going out on his own, maybe getting some, you know, having some camaraderie with a few people. I mean, he's been a jerk to a lot of people, but he's been turning over a new leaf, as it were. So he's been definitely improving, definitely improving the last couple gears. <clears throat> so anyway, G1 Climax Tournament. From July 15th, I believe, to the middle of August. 19 events, apparently, I think, over a month. I'm going to say right now, I'm going to try to review it all. The New Japan Cup reviews did not do all that well in comparison to previous years. So I don't even know if I'm going to do Best of Super Juniors. They didn't even talk about Best of Super Juniors here. I don't think they did. Um, if they did, then they said it in passing. I didn't see anything about a video package, but... I don't know if I'm going to review Best of Super Juniors. I, I don't know. Because I, A, I don't know if I'm going to have time. B, I don't think there's going to be that much interest that Those reviews have never done all that well. I may just start hitting the high points of the New Japan year. So I may do the G1. <clears throat> I may take one, two, or even three videos, Human Sun to beat them together, and then just do the finals. We shall see. <laughs> but if you get G1 reviews, you are probably going to get them on delay. On delay. 
So anyway, video package on the women's three-way. Look, y'all wanted to see Mercedes Monet in a three-way with two other women, and here you are. Maybe not exactly how you wanted to see it. And I'm calling you all out here. No, in all seriousness, Mercedes Monet. Da, 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 what the hell kind of goddamn theme is that? Sounds like they could just hit, you know, a goddamn hammer onto a keyboard a few times. Anyway, Mercedes Monet. And I'm going to say right now that I know nothing about stardom outside of Julia. Oh, boy. Jesus. Jesus Christ. You want to talk about beauty. Beauty and power and skill. I know that there are some talented women that have been through stardom that are in stardom. I don't have time to watch stardom. There's only so many hours in the day, the week. And I already review enough wrestling as it is. But what matches I have seen that I've been furnished, um, you know, with a link to see, I have enjoyed. Hazuki, who I'm not familiar with, and who I thought it was AZM, but it's Azume. I'm a, I have heard the name Azume. Heard. Seen a couple clips. Don't think I've seen a full match of her. Heard the name. She's been highly talented. Don't really don't know shit about Azuki. Or Hazuki. I'm sorry. I'm really trying not to pronounce these names badly. That being said, <clears throat> this three-way for the IWGP Women's Championship... Good. Very good. Let me try to turn that thumb around. Good. Good. Good stuff. Watch this. This is one of the highlights of the goddamn night, and this was a pretty kicked-up second half of the card. From this match till the end, they pretty much just kept hitting strength to strength to strength to strength, and they went they went fast right away. Azume and Hazuki went really, really fast. Apparently, they're the queens of the flash pin, according to Chris Charlton. Mercedes is there for every step of it. She is enjoying herself. She's having fun. <clears throat> She's able to show her skills. And is probably getting paid a sizable chunk of money. Which makes sense for the fact that she is a big star. She was in WWE television for a while. I'm not saying these other two women aren't really good. But as far as you know, star quality, getting Mercedes is a big deal. Now, it's disappointing that Kyrie may be out of stardom. I don't know. It just totally depends. Hopefully not, considering Vince may be back, you know, in the fold. So maybe Kyrie should stay, stay and actually continue to work and not be, you know, brained and everything like she was during the last part of her WWE run. But we got a double bank statement or a double money statement, double statement, I think is just what they're calling it now, the backstabber. And then we got a triple submission spot where they're all trying to go for each other's necks. I've seen this movie before. We got a sunset flip bomb, you know, Tower of Doom to a big pop. We got the Meteora. We A nice fold-up pin. We got some really, really good stuff. Some nice elbow strikes, some good kicks. Uh, we, at one point, I, I don't remember who it was, but... One of the one one of the two women, other two women, was just nailing Mercedes. I think it was Azume, but just nailing her with elbows. And then that last one, Mercedes is like, "Ow, I needed my brain." But <clears throat> we got some good shit going here. We got um, the money maker, <laughs> one, two, three, really good match, very enjoyable, very fast paced, very good stuff. And Mercedes is gonna face. Mayu Iwatani, who I have actually seen a couple matches of. Oh, Mercedes, why did you slap her? Why? Why would you anger somebody of Iwatani's skills? But then again, Mercedes is supposed to be the heel here, even though she is cheered because people know her from WWE television and from The Mandalorian and I assume from other stuff. That's going to be pretty interesting. Apparently that's on a pay-per-view. I think it's going to be on New Japan World. New Japan World of Stardom might be the Stardom pay-per-view, which, sorry, I'm not going to be able to watch. But I hope those who watch it, they have a lot of fun. So, uh, Shoto Umino against Zack Sabre Jr., TV Championship match, 15-minute time limit. Is it as good as the match they had in the New Japan Cup? No, because that was almost twice as long. That was allowed to breathe a little bit. And this, because of the 15-minute time limit, which I like, they had to go a little... They they had to kind of go a little bit more full bore, but they were allowed a few rest spots, good strikes, and some you know good submission work, arm targeting just to take away the ability of hitting the Death Rider properly. Zack Sabre Jr. is a treasure to watch in the ring. Shota has really done some great stuff. He does hit a Death Rider, hits Spike DDT, but then gets caught in a jackknife pin. One, two, three. Oh no, Zack Sabre Jr. 
retains the TV championship. And Shota Umino, he will get more shots. He will obviously be in the G1 field. For the love of God, put him in the G1 field. So, Bishamon, <clears throat> Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi with the bow staff that has more charisma than he ever will in five lifetimes. Yoshihashi's a good wrestler, just doesn't have charisma. Anyway... Taking on Aussie Open, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, IWGP Tag Team Championship, and oh my goodness, Kyle Fletcher busted his head open, getting more than just a bit of a boo-boo, he busted himself right above his ear, and my goodness, he was bleeding like crazy, he had to tag out, Mark Davis said, okay, I'll take over, and then they taped up his head, and then Kyle Fletcher's like, I'm getting back in there with my brain falling out, and I'm gonna win these tag titles. This was good. Is it the best tag team match I've seen all year? No, but the crowd certainly helped because the crowd was very, very hot for it. They were chain Aussie Open. That was great to hear. Yoshihashi was doing good stuff because he can work. He just doesn't have any personality or interest, and I feel asleep whenever he starts talking. If you get that translation reference, I love you guys. But... The Shota gets, or Shoto gets stopped. That's their finish, their double team finish. Uh, Aussie Open hit that double, that double clothesline, one from behind, one in the front. I've seen that movie before. That's where you come from a land down under, or come in a land down under. But then Coriolis, one, two, three, they pin Goto, not Yoshiashi, Mr. Lack of Personality, but Goto. Not that Goto has always had the most personality, but compared to Yoshihashi, Goto's goddamn Clark Gable. I'm done dumping on Yoshihashi, at least for this review. One, two, three, new tag team champions, big pop, good stuff, good stuff. Aussie Open winning the tag titles. If you want to rematch them and FTR at some point, I'm all for it. And Bishamon will get the tag titles back at some point. This doesn't mean that Goto and Yoshihashi shouldn't get a tag title shot again at some point. So hopefully, maybe they put Yoshihashi's bow staff in there to cut the promos, because even as an inanimate object, it talks better. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to Hiromu Takahashi against Robbie Eagles for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Goodness me, I forgot how much I enjoyed watching Robbie Eagles wrestle. Um, I know he's been part of, I believe, the New Zealand brand. I can't remember if he had an injury or he's just taking time. I can't remember otherwise if he had an injury he's just taking time off. Because um, I hadn't seen him for a bit, and again, only so many hours in the week for me to be able, in the month and the year, for me to be able to watch shit. But I like Robbie Eagles. Got to see him at, um, got to see him at one of the Defy Northwest Wrestling shows back in, I want to say 2019. Robbie Eagles is a hell of a goddamn talent. Got to see him at the Super J Cup in Tacoma. Got to see one of Jushin Thunder Liger's last U.S. matches, which was a thrill. I don't care there was a goddamn tag match in the op in the opener of the show. And Jushin Thunder Liger basically was just coasting on being Jushin Thunder Liger at that point. It was great. It was great. Robbie Eagles is also great. Hiromu Takashi is also great. I don't know why he wanted to land on his head during a spot at one point here. But Eagles targets a knee. Hiromu had um, had his knee targeted during the lead up to this third barricade spot. But Eagles even got his knee targeted but then took over. And Hiromu's selling. He's really selling that knee. I actually thought for a second his knee was really fucked. And he was just saying, no, I must go through this because I faced Dragon Lee and wrestled the rest of it with a broken neck. Still don't know how the hell he did that. That was at the Cow Palace. G1 special at the Cow Palace. And people blame Dragon Lee for that. You assholes. Anyway, so let's move back to this. Ten minutes in and this match is not only flying by... It was kind of uncomfortable to watch when you had how well Hiromu was selling the knee. The Super Poison Rana, don't know why. Poison Rana, stupid. Not as stupid as Deathmatch Wrestling, but it is stupid. Um, and then a 450 onto the knee, and then a roll-up by Hiromu, and the Ron Miller special. He, Hiromu tries to get to the ropes, he tries to get to the ropes again, tries to get to the ropes again. And then gets another roll-up, and it looks like Robbie Eagles might actually get the victory. Holy shit, Robbie Eagles is going to win? 20 minutes in, we get the uh, Dynamite Plunger, and then we get Time Bomb 243. <laughs> Romo Takashi retains the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Here's what you do. You have Robbie Eagles win the Best of Super Juniors, and you have him beat Hiromu Takahashi at Dominion. Why not? That's how, That's how you do it here. I just, I, I just see no other way where, 
unless it's like a one-shot thing for Eagles and he's going to go back to Australia and do some of the stuff with New Zealand, you know, for the New Zealand brand and everything. I get that, but Robbie Eagles absolutely deserves another run with the Junior Heavyweight Championship with cheering fans this time. He did a great job during the pandemic era. Let's give him another shot. I mean, it's like it's not like Hiromu isn't bulletproof. He certainly is deathproof because the man just refuses to basically let anything keep him out of wrestling. Despite the fact after that broken neck, he was out for almost a year and a half. Moving on. Video package on the main event. Sonata has a new look with trunks. And, well, he actually had that hair color before. And the rain making in Ryogoku. It's raining money all over. Somebody busted the ATM open. Somebody poisoned the water hole. Okada versus Sonata, IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And I should have broken this out in the other matches, but good, good, good. In fact, from... The women's three-way, where Mercedes got tag-teamed by two women, phrasing, and the rest of it, up, 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 and away. Great stuff. Seriously, this is great stuff. Can Sonata finish his story? Unlike Cody. <laughs> Cody wrote, Cody couldn't finish his story. He's getting his ass beat currently as of this <laughs> recording, and I'm laughing. My Joker arc moment, as somebody told, as somebody uh, coined it. Okada more heelish. And then... Because Okada got planted on the concrete at one point, and then he got planted on the concrete during this, he said, oh, you're going to target my neck? Fine, I'll hit a DDT on the concrete later. Ow, I need that head. And he's getting revenge. Sonata firing back more pops. Like, even though Okada is still Okada and will <clears throat> continue to be the guy, they were starting to turn to Sonata's side. Skull end, Okada fought out, we got a moonsault with the knees up, oh no, wrist control, can Sonata turn, you know, add one more notch to the 8-1 and one record that Okada has over him? Because you had Sonata win the New Japan Cup, <clears throat> remember that? Won the New Japan Cup, then failed to win otherwise. But anyway, he failed to capitalize and win the title. So then we get the landslide, bring me down. But Sonata hits his own version of the Rainmaker, the Skullmaker, as it were. Which just sounds like it should be like a death metal band, or should it sounds like it should be like a medieval, like a medieval villain from like a sword and sorcery movie from Italy. <clears throat> but anyway, strikes and we get Sonata no selling a bit, and then Sonata sells. The, the no selling stuff kind of bugs me. I mean, I get it, but it also kind of bugs me. <clears throat> Moonsault, Inziguri, all of a sudden, oh no, a moonsault for two, Inziguri, Okada's gonna win, he, you know, he gets trapped in a bridge pin, one, two, what, kick out, and then gets hit with a shining wizard, like, oh my god, Okada's gonna get beat, but then the Cobra Flosion, oh god damn it, here we go, he goes for, he goes for the landslide, but then gets, goes for the Rainmaker, gets hit with Deadfall, that's apparently the name of that DDT, that Sonata's been using as a finish. One, two, three. Sonata has just beaten Okada and is now the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Okay. I didn't expect that. I'm all for it. I'm all for this. He's probably going to lose it back to Okada at Dominion. <clears throat> but you know what? This is a big goddamn deal. This is proof that they have a little faith in Sonata here. And this is good. I like this. I enjoyed this quite a bit. This was a great end to a pretty damn perfect second half. I mean, not even that the first half was bad. I mean, you could argue, actually, once you got past the second match, this is one of the best goddamn New Japan shows they put on in a while, and even those first two matches were what they were. And Sonata is all, all emotional, obviously, even though he's stone-faced. But then Hiromu shows up. And Hiromu says, congratulations, but I want to achieve my dream. I want to be the IWGP World Heavyweight and Junior Heavyweight Champion. I want a shot. And Kanemaru says, you say you want a shot, I want a shot at your title. So basically, he, Hiromu, has to be Kanemaru, and then he will get a shot at Sonata. <clears throat> okay. So I assume we're going to do this in Duntaku, um... We have to. I don't. They're not going to extend that until Dominion. There's no way, unless unless wrestling Duntaku does not happen this year, and it traditionally does happen every single year. It's going to be a big deal, and then you're going to have Hiromu as a junior heavyweight champion going in 
unless they do a switch all of a sudden, we're going to be getting that. We're going to be getting him defending the title at Dominion, but this is going to be a nice stop point until we maybe get Okada against Sonata. For the love of God, don't you dare do Finley versus Sonata. I don't think we really need to see that overall, though. Pretty goddamn good event overall. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. Next New Japan review, I don't know what it is, but I hope you enjoyed this one. See you soon.